So in today's video, we will be talking about color calibration. Hey there. If it's the first time that you are visiting this channel, my name is Nelson Lim and I'm a digital artist and technologist. In this channel, I help CG VFX artists level up their skills and mindset to create more, earn more, and to live more. So if you like to hear more of this kind of stuff, remember to subscribe to this channel and hit the bell button as well so you get notifications whenever I produce new content. So a quick caveat here, the art and science of color calibration and color management is a very deep one in the area of CG and visual effects. And there are dedicated professionals who do this full time and that is all that they do. So this video is really about getting color calibration working for most CG VFX artists, especially if you're working from home. So why is color calibration important to CG artists? Let me give you a couple of reasons why. Firstly, because we as CG artists work on the visual medium, it's just like how professional photographers also color calibrate their monitors to ensure that when they are working on those edits on the photos, that it reproduces accurately in those color printouts for their clients. In the same way, it is extremely important for us as CG artists to be working with accurate colors. So as CG artists, we invest heavily in good graphics cards, good computers, as well as good monitors that are able to represent a whole gamut of colors as well as lots of pixels. Now, it would be a shame really to have a good monitor, but not have that monitor actually display accurate color because we have not color calibrated our monitor. Now, some of you may have gotten some really good monitors that come factory calibrated and you're wondering why would you need to calibrate your monitor? Well, monitors go off calibration every three to six months. So you actually need to calibrate your monitor every three to six months. Now that varies depending on the monitor hardware and you will, as you calibrate it often, you will get a sense of how often you actually need to calibrate. But a good rule of thumb is anywhere from three to six months. Now, many of us work with more than one monitor. So it's very important that we color calibrate our display devices so that they give us consistent color reproduction and that we are looking at things consistently. Now, it is true that you cannot get a 100% color match on most of our monitors that we use and even on some of the even more expensive high-end monitors, but it does give you a good enough consistency for you to judge color by. So it's actually important. If you have more than one monitor, it's good for you to calibrate them. Now, a lot of us are working freelance or working from home right now, where we no longer have the luxury of a studio where the monitors are color calibrated. So it's actually even more important for us now, if you're working from home, if you're working on personal projects as well, that you have a color accurate monitor that is color calibrated. If you are a CG VFX artist who's attempting to cut your first effects demo reel, please remember to check out my free effects demo reel guide, which I'll include in the description below. It's a 10 page PDF that has lots of information on the mistakes that you should avoid, as well as the things that you should do in order to get a demo reel that gets you noticed, gets you interviews, and finally gets you the job. So let's jump in on how to get our monitors color calibrated. What are you going to need to color calibrate your monitor? Well, besides a monitor, you are going to need a color calibration device. And there are several on the market. You may have heard of some of them. There's Spiders, there's x right Pantone. And the one that I found to give me fairly accurate color calibration and give me a good match across monitors has generally been from i1 display by x right Penta. Now they make several flavors of this. The one that I'm going to recommend is actually the i1 display studio. 
and this is one of their basic range color calibration device this is about a hundred and sixty nine dollars on Amazon and I will attach the link below if you are interested to get this this is a pretty good color calibration device that you can use for your laptops for your desktop peak monitors um, and it connects via USB and they come with a software that you can use but we're going to use some other piece of software that we'll talk about later there is a i1 display pro flavor of it so not the studio but the pro version and that is about 260 dollars on amazon so i think that the studio is is worth the price but if you are a small studio or if you have to do this very often for many many monitors then you really want to consider the pro because feature set wise is pretty much the same but it just calibrates faster so that would be a big plus if you're having to calibrate lots of monitors in a studio there's also the i1 display pro plus and really the i1 display pro plus the main feature that sets it apart from the pro is that it allows you to calibrate monitors up to 2000 nits in the brightness so if you are having to color calibrate a hdr capable monitor you're going to need the i1 display pro plus now most monitors including mine which is a bank pd 2700q i think it only supports up to 350 nits and so it's not an hdr capable monitor and hdr capable monitors are extremely expensive so most of you won't need the i1 display pro plus any case i'm going to include the links to the pro and the pro plus in the description below if you're interested to get them once you've got your colorimeter you're going to need a piece of color profiling software and what this software does is it talks with your colorimeter as it is analyzing your monitor and it generates a bunch of settings which is called an icc profile and what this profile does is it allows your computer to know what sort of color adjustments it needs to make on your monitor in order to produce more accurate colors so the piece of colorimeter that you have purchased usually comes with a default piece of software in our situation i'm going to download a open source software called display cal that just allows me to use a bunch of presets that may match my brand of monitor better so the first steps is we need to go to the display cal website and download the display cal software once you've downloaded display cal you're going to want to install it with the default settings and the default settings Will work for most situations the only particular setting i wanted to highlight is to make sure that you let display cal handle your color management rather than windows which doesn't do such a great job and that's the default setting so you don't have to change anything about it after installing display cal you will want to start display cal up and once you start display cal it's going to ask you to install the color engine and so go ahead and say yes and download and install the color engine so that it works with display cal all right at this stage once you've downloaded and installed your color calibration software you'll want to make sure that your monitor is at least running for about 30 minutes so that's a good gauge to have so that your monitor is warmed up and the color calibration can be as accurate as possible You'll want to then proceed to reset your monitor to factory default settings. I found that that's going to be the easiest. And then you'll want to turn off any sort of dynamic contrast or post-processing on your monitors. So go through all of the settings and make sure that you aren't using any sort of post-processing settings. Now, if your monitor allows you'll want to make sure that you have it set such that you're able to adjust the color temperature either via RGB values or 
using kelvins. If you have a more advanced monitor, they may provide you settings by kelvins. So make sure you enable that. Next, you want to make sure that you set your brightness levels to whatever your preferences are before you proceed with calibration. I recommend calibrating in as dark a room as is possible for you so that your color settings are as accurate as possible. And whenever you want to see really accurate color, you can always deem down the darkness of your room. If you can't do that, it isn't such a big deal. Just calibrate with what would be your most usual setting that you would use your monitor with. Finally, it's time to plug in your i1 display colorimeter into the USB port on your desktop. Now, I recommend that you plug that USB directly into the back of your desktop and not to some other USB port or hub. All right, now let's start our display cal software. Once you have started it, you should see this screen here and you should see a drop down under display. Select the display that you would like to calibrate. In this case, I'm going to calibrate my Dell E2414 monitor. Under instruments, you should see an i1 display pro Calmer color monkey display uh, the, as the one that is selected if you are using an i1 display studio. Now, like I said, hardware wise, they're essentially the same. The i1 display studio is just a little bit slower. Next, under mode, if you are calibrating an LCD screen, ensure that it is under LCD. Now, this is the one that I would also encourage you to, by default, this settings, you can just set that to sRGB. And this is just a good default setting when you haven't have anything calibrated to. Finally, and most importantly, under correction, you want to click on this little globe over here and it should now start to look for the different colorimeter corrections that people have submitted. So you can select either one, it will probably be fine. Either matrix or spectral, they are essentially the same. So just choose one that suits you and hit OK. And now you are basically ready to start to calibrate and profile. So you can just click this and you can begin calibrating and profiling. Now, a point to note, if you don't find your color correction profile available when you click the colorimeter database, you can always click the drop down and select just the generic spectral LCD white LED family. I found that this is fairly accurate as well. Now we're ready to hit calibrate and profile. So click that button and you should see your measurement area come up here. What you want to do is move your eye display colorimeter over this gray area and hit start measurement. Now it might take a second, but now you should start to see the instrument being set up. Once you see the start measurement button ungray out, you'll want to click on start measurement. At this stage, you'll want to make sure that you have access to the RGB values of your monitor and that you can now begin to adjust those colors. So the goal of this is to try to get those R, G and B, the red, green and blue bars to kind of line up together at that center mark. So once those bars pretty much line up, you want to hit stop measurement. Once you've adjusted and calibrated your display's color temperature level, you want to click on continue on to calibration. And at this stage, your monitor will continue to display different samples of colors that your colorimeter will then take images of and be able to use that to generate an ICC profile. This can run anywhere from 15 minutes to half an hour. So we'll just wait for this process to be over and we'll come back. Once your calibration and profiling is complete, you should see this screen and you will be able to see the results. If you uncheck preview calibration, that will be what your monitor 
the colors were before and when you check it on this is what it is after calibration and it does tell you that this monitor covers about 94.7 percent of srgb gamut and 66.6% um, of Adobe RGB and 70.1% of DCI-P3. Now this isn't a fantastic monitor that I'm producing this calibration on, and so it's only able to cover about 95% of sRGB. So if you have a better monitor, you should be able to cover about 100% of sRGB and some higher value of DCI-P3 and Adobe RGB. So once you're complete, you can go ahead and select install profile as system default and this will be the default on all users and say install profile and hit yes if it requires permission and then you should see that the profile has been installed and activated okay and now you should have a color calibrated display if you have been holding back on color calibrating your monitor, I hope this video has been helpful to you. If you are a CG artist or VFX artist or anyone who works with visuals on a computer, it is absolutely critical that you are able to rely on your monitor to give you accurate color feedback as you are doing your work. So this process I hope has shown you that it does not have to be expensive and it doesn't have to be complicated either. So if you like this video, please remember to hit the like button. And if you want to hear more from me, remember to hit the subscribe button as well as the bell to get notified when future content arrives. Finally, let me know in the comments below if you currently work on a monitor that is already color calibrated or not. And if you don't, well, let me know what your concerns are. And if there are any questions about today's video, please remember to put them in the comments below. I will do my best to answer them. All right, so with that, I'll see you guys next week.